Hello. Just a little while ago I reviewed this radio, it's the Jumper T12 Pro. I quite liked it but I had a little bit of an issue when I was using this little Tiny Hawk and I lost signal a couple of times when I was quite close in. Now a couple of people pointed me to this thing in the model called the Fine Tune and I'd actually looked at this um, but what I think now is I did it wrong. What I'd done is I just literally looked at the frequency tune, it was zero, I looked at the RSI, I moved it around, I figured that zero was the highest rating. But this isn't the way to do it, and I saw a couple of videos about it, but I couldn't really figure out why they knew this information. Um, I don't like to do things unless I know where it's come from, else it feels like I'm just doing things out of suspicion. But I found um, a document that Pascal Langer had produced, and he's the guy that developed the code base for the multi-protocol module, and explained that this uh, the CC2500 RF module in the multi protocol module there's variations in the oscillator chip um, and whereas FreeSky would tune things in the factory so they'd be right these are all going to come out a little bit different and he had the actual process for tuning so I'm going to do that now now it didn't say in the document about you should have this far away but it kind of makes sense again one of the things I did was I had it very close to myself so I'm thinking that the the variations in the RSSI aren't going to be as much if you like this close so I'm going to put this a little way away and then we're going to record basically the the, the min point where it loses signal the max point and then we do this little sum in order to do it so I'm going to just pop this about 10 feet away and we'll come back okay now that's safely away what we're going to do is go to the frequency tune and go first to the negative number still connected where it starts to lose signal and from messing around with it the other day I think it was minus 30 something ish before it went that's well, quite quite a lot on this one telemetry lost okay so just go back up a few telemetry recovered wow it's literally right on recovered. minus 48 so I've made a quick note of that minus 48, and now I'm going to go to the plus. So we see what R side of zero already, and that's on minus 37. Oh, this is quite different, isn't it? Looks like it loses 23, Telemetry comes recovered. back at 22, so 22 is our high lost. point. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Okay, so 22. Receiver still connected. Telemetry lost. It's just on 22. So I might put that on 21. Now a little bit of a calculation. We take the min value, which is minus 48, and we add it to the max value, which is 21, and that gives us minus 27. We then divide this by two, which would give minus 13 and a half. Let's call it uh, minus 13, because that max value was quite close to 22. And that is gonna be our new fine tune value on the radio. So what I'm going to do is set this to minus 13 and now I'm going to rebind the quad we were using. Okay so we got the quad rebound, we're on our frequency tune of minus 13, our RSSI is pretty high but it's sat right there, uh, possibly too high to get a proper reading. But what I'll do, I'll finish charging up one of these batteries and we'll go fly in the places where we lost signal the other day and see what happens. So here we are ready to fly with the new frequency in, but I just wanted to remind you of yesterday. And one thing I do know about this is the RSI drops from 50 or just under 50 down to zero without going any, any further. 
So let's try those two places that had problems yesterday. And I should point out that this wasn't a single drop. I tested multiple times just to make sure I could recreate it. And of course I want to do the same thing by flying multiple times to see if it's fixed. So here's my very first foray into this. And you'll see I'm going quite slowly. And what I do notice is that the RSSI is able to drop a lot more without the quad losing signal, which would seem to be it basically. As soon as the signal got lower before, it would drop off completely rather than just dropping a lot lower. If you've used SPI receivers before, you'll know that they can go pretty low before they'll actually lose signal. It's quite frightening because it will sort of bleat losing telemetry all the way. Um, and we're good inside as well. So as I said, I, I managed to partially charge up a couple of batteries uh, and this led me to be able to, you know, fly a lot faster and just mess around and have more of a good time uh, just dusting off the cobwebs a bit and uh, using my garden as a little bit of a track. Not a brilliantly large garden, but, you know, it's it's not bad. Perhaps I'll get a little bit better at flying uh, small quads in better proximity. And there you go, down safely, and we've got the thumbs up there from this pilot. I apologise everybody having to stare between my legs as I land. Okay, so that was worth doing. I mean, it's not a amazing test. I could just fly in the areas that were making me drop before and testing over and over again, that seems pretty consistent. We still had uh, telemetry lost signals all the time, but if you've flown SPI receivers, you'll be used to that rattling off all the time because you tend to be able to fly the RSSI a lot lower than you would be able to a normal FreeSky receiver. So it's, it's worth moving the goalposts on when you're getting the alarms. But uh, yeah, I still want to do, of course, a full range test. This will give me um, a much better idea, but that seems to fix that one. So certainly worth doing that tune. This worked for me on minus 13. Of course, that doesn't mean it's going to work for you. The, the point is that all these chips have slightly different oscillating frequencies, and that's what you need to fine tune for. The idea, though, this minus 13 should be good for all free sky receivers or, or anything that uses this chip, which is a couple of other ones. But based on the fact this is a, an SPI receiver, I find these a little bit different anyway. I don't think there's any harm in the next time I get a when I can actually fly a proper receiver like an XM Plus or something to try this again. Of course, if you've got something like an XM Plus, you won't have RSSI here because this is working on the telemetry signal. So you'll have to use your OSD and figure it out from that or have it uh, beep when it loses signal so you know which is the min and max value. But yeah, sorry I didn't manage to uh, include this correctly in the last video. It's because I didn't understand it. I'm going to put a link to Pascal's document about how this works below in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But there you go, that's mine. That fixed the problem I had yesterday. I still don't know, as I said, what the actual proper range of the full module is. And that's what I intend to find out as soon as lockdown's finished and I can actually fly somewhere. So I hope that was helpful and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.